In today's video, strange is definitely the norm. Like this wasp cosplaying as an ant and a panda at the same time. And this creature whose name sounds like it was plucked straight out of a Scooby-Doo cartoon. The Baffling Beetle The Baffling Beetle is one insect that literally lives in the danger zone. They choose to live their lives incognito, along with army ants, which are, pound for pound, one of the most vicious species this world has ever seen. Every day, these insects fan out from temporary nests or biovacs in a raiding party that can include up to 200,000 individuals. They attack everything. Small creatures like other insects, spiders, and scorpions are dismembered and eaten, but the baffling beetle has found a way to live with this horde in relative safety. And how it does it is truly quite baffling. The baffling beetle literally hitches a ride on the back of the ants. Once it chooses a suitable host, it discreetly bites them near the abdomen and pretends to be a second abdomen. All of this while the ants not realizing what was happening. Scientists had discovered the species did it accidentally while studying army ants. They noticed that some specimens had unusually misshapen abdomens, and some even had two. You can just imagine the surprise when they discovered this tiny hitchhiker. The Panda Ant the panda ant is one of those animals who has an identity crisis. Looks like an ant, but it ain't. And it sports the coloration of a certain cuddly bear that we all know and love, the panda. Panda ants are actually not ants at all, but instead are a kind of wasp, actually. Sometimes called velvet ants, panda ants do not live in colonies and also do not have queens and drones and workers. Panda ants get their name from the dramatic black and white coloration of the females. Like many wasps, they possess a very powerful and painful sting, giving them the nickname of cow killers. Females have the stingers, but they have no wings. The males are also larger, which is something very uncommon in the insect world, and while they do lack stingers, they do have wings. The differences between the sexes are so dramatic that it's often very difficult to determine what the two sexes of a given species are unless the two are actually seen mating. The males in many species are so much larger than the females that they actually pick the females up and carry them in flight during mating. The Thorny Devil the Thorny Devil, also known as the Thorny Dragon, the Moloch, the Thorny Lizard, or the Mountain Devil, is an amazing Australian reptile. It got its name owing to the two large horned scales resembling that of devil horns. Despite its appearance, this intriguing creature is totally harmless. They're found in central and western Australia habitats and deserts and arid scrubland. They're currently an endangered species and are being actively protected by conservationists. The whole upper side of the lizard's body is covered with thorns. Also, the creature features a spiny false head on the back of its neck. These natural spikes act as a defense mechanism against predators. The thorny devil can measure up to 20 centimeters long, including the tail, and females are bigger than males. In general, the species are brown and tan in color, but like the chameleon, this reptile also has the ability to change its color. Though they look like they feed on the souls of sinners, they mainly eat ants and can gobble up 3,000 of them in a single meal. The Hummingbird Hawk Moth once you've seen a hummingbird hawk moth and its impressive proboscis darting about from flower to flower, it's easy to understand why many think that these creatures are actually birds. Indeed, quite apart from hovering like an exotic hummingbird, this utterly confusing insect clearly looks as if it has tail feathers, where most moths have a tapered abdomen. The hawk moth's inch-long curved proboscis, which uncoils as they feed, allows it to suck up nectar from flowers that have a long corolla such as honeysuckle, giving the moths a clear advantage over other nectar-guzzling insects. Furthermore, these whizzy hummingbird impressionists are clever, as they remember to revisit high nectar-yielding plants. The Tinkerbell Fairy Fly It's very difficult to discover new species. Researchers spend years in inhospitable environments without the assurance that they will discover some new kind of creature. But just imagine trying to discover a new creature that's so tiny you can barely see it with the naked eye. Enter the Tinkerbell Fairy Fly, a fairly recently discovered species of fairy fly in Costa Rica. It's astounding that this creature was ever discovered. It's only 250 micrometers long and only 2.5 times as wide as a human hair. The scientist responsible for the discovery said that locating this tiny arthropod was possibly equivalent to finding a solitary needle in 200 haystacks. This fairy fly is the sole member of its quite appropriately named genus, Tinkerbella, named after the fairy Tinkerbell from Peter Pan the Fusa, or Fasa in this case. The elusive Fusa is one of those animals that's indigenous to Madagascar, and you may know from the animated movie of the same name. Like most animals living in Madagascar, it's a very unique creature that kind of has an identity crisis. You see, the Fusa's closest living relative is the mongoose, but aside from sharing a common lineage, the two animals have virtually nothing in common. 
You see, the Fusa was initially mistaken for a species of cat. And when you examine a Fusa, you'll find out that it's a really easy mistake to make. Its shape is definitely cat-like, although its muzzle does resemble that of a dog. They also have the retractable claws of a cat and feline-like teeth. It is the largest carnivore, thus the top predator in Madagascar, where it's equally at home on the ground or high up in the trees, where it uses its long tail to balance as it climbs from branch to branch. It eats just about anything it can get its sharp claws on, from mice and even wild pigs. But it mostly hunts lemur, which is yet another creature native to Madagascar. The Mata Mata Turtle Looking like one of Mother Nature's many mistakes, the Mata Mata Turtle may not be the cutest thing you'll ever see, but I'm certain it'll be one of the most unique. And I'm not just talking about how it looks. It's a freshwater turtle species found in northern regions of South America. They're primarily found in the Amazon and Orinoco basins, but they're also found in other river systems such as the Escuibo and the Apaque. Looks more like a leaf than a turtle, which is an advantage given that the Mata Mata is lazier than the average turtle. Its rugged pointy carapace, bumpy neck, triangular head, and pointy snout allows it to blend seamlessly in with leaves lying at the bottom of shallow ponds. The ponds are its preferred place to hang out. It can't swim, which is weird by turtle standards, so in order to feed it lies motionless, waiting for fish to swim near its mouth. When one is near enough, it opens its mouth, which creates a vacuum that literally sucks the fish in. They're highly sought after in the pet trade, which is the main reason why wild populations have been slowly decreasing at this point. Because although they do keep well as pets, they rarely mate in captivity. Duck-billed platypus. We all know about the weird creature known as the duck-billed platypus, also formerly named Perry, but just a few centuries ago, no one really knew of its existence. In fact, when the first specimens were sent from Australia to Europe, many scientists thought it was a hoax. And I don't actually blame them, as the weirdly interesting platypus looks like someone cut off bits from different animals and sewed them together. It's got a duck's bill, webbed feet, and a beaver's tail, and body. It lays eggs and takes care of it in a pouch, and it's one of the only two mammals to carry venom. Aboriginal legends say that the platypus was the result when a female duck made it with a water rat. However, no matter how unlikely that pairing would happen in real life, it doesn't compare to the fact that for years, the world thought that the platypus was the work of someone's nimble fingers, only out for a quick buck. Mary River Turtle. With its green hair and the fact that the Joker movie was such a huge thing, you'd think someone thought it fine to give this guy the Joker hairdo. But as we've proven time and time again, the truth is far stranger than fiction. With fleshy barbels like spiked piercings under its chin and an uncanny ability to breathe through its genitals, the Mary River Turtle was thrust into the international spotlight overnight. Native to Queensland and the Sunshine Coast River it's named after, this punk rock turtle has a head crowned by vertical strands of algae that also grow on its body. In addition, it sports face furniture in the form of long, fleshy groves under its chin. However, perhaps the Mary River Turtle's most unusual feature is its ability to breathe through its genitals. The turtle has gill-like organs within its cloaca, a multi-purpose orifice used by reptiles for excretion and mating that allow it to stay underwater for up to three days. The Headless Chicken Monster. Now, if the name of this creature doesn't sound strange to you, well, there's something wrong with you. Yet the strangest of this marine animal doesn't end with his name alone. Looks like it's from out of this world as well. Also known as Enpanacides eximia, this creature is actually a sea cucumber, and a very rare one at that. So rare in fact that although scientists have known about it since the 19th century, a lot of modern biologists thought it didn't exist. Until very recently, of course. A live specimen was spotted in a film deep in the Southern Ocean, finally confirming the existence of the creature. The oddball sea cucumber captured in the footage filters through sediment on the ocean floor, feasting on organic material that it scoops up with a cluster of tentacles. Unusually for sea cucumbers, it has fins that allow it to scoot away from predators. But there's much more about eczemia that scientists just don't know. This includes where it's distributed and how many individuals exist in the world's oceans. See you all next time!